Good morning. Uh, we're here to talk with John regarding his sermon from yesterday on the book of Jude, which is uh, only one chapter. And uh, he didn't go through all of the verses, but he went through uh, most of the verses that, that make up uh, the book of uh, Jude towards the end of the New Testament. Uh, along those lines, uh, he discussed two very important doctrines uh, that I'm going to be asking him two questions about today, and that is the doctrine of hell and also the doctrine of, of heaven. Um, the first question I want to ask you in terms of the doctrine of, uh, of hell is, is that we live in a society, and I should, guess you could probably say ever since the beginning of time, man has cried out for justice and and for justice to be carried out. But we live in a society where we see it on the news all the time, where there's a strong demand for justice, and rightfully so. I think that's part of what it means to be created in God's image is a desire for justice. But yet, at the same time, uh, we live in a world where a lot of people have an issue with the doctrine of hell uh, and denying it, saying that it's a fictional place, that it's mythical, but we see that the Bible clearly teaches it. How can the doctrine of hell uh, help us come to terms with how God does indeed uh, execute justice? Yeah, so I think when when people uh, consider justice, um, I think they have a certain outcome in their own mind of what they deem is just. Uh, and even in the sermon yesterday, I talked about how we have moments where we can have anger and rage and commit a murder. And then because of that just small moment, um, justice has served us with a life sentence. Um, and even though it might not seem, right, how, how could I be put in prison for the rest of my life for just one mistake that just occurred in one second? But we have to remember, uh, as we seek out justice, it's justice for whom? An infinite God. Right? He's eternal, right? So again, if, if we're going to um, say that he is a just God, or a, even a righteous, merciful God, well, those have to be equal. Uh, if we try to remove him being just and not having wrath, then we're going to remove his mercy. And so those have to be proportional. And so with hell being an eternal reality of God's wrath and judgment, um, it is perfect in his nature as an infinite God to punish people with sins that are against him of infinite value. Uh, and so I know, again, it's hard for us because we, we want to think of justice in the sense of outcomes and how, how come the outcome can be proportional. But we have to ask, are we more concerned about the crime committed or the punishment? Uh, and you have to weigh that as the crime committed against God is far greater than anything we can imagine. And it is rightful and it is just for him to punish people etern eternally um, for the sins they commit against an eternal God. Thank you. Uh, the flip side of that, you also uh, talk, you talked about heaven and how by God's grace through the finished work of Jesus Christ, we have the promise of heaven. And it was, uh, you made a very profound point in, in terms of your illustration of Point Nemo, mm -hmm. uh, the most remote island uh, on, on the earth, uh, the furthest from any other shore than, than any other island. And we find it in the South Pacific. And you talked about how uh, cruel it would be to give somebody uh, just a bottle of water and some goldfish and hoping that they would be able to, to, to live and be able to sustain themselves. Uh, my 11-year-old son on the way home from church even talked about how profound of a point this was and what you were making, the point that you were making is, is uh, what kind of God would, would he be if he were to save us and then just give us a bunch of stuff to enjoy, but yet there's no hope uh, for tomorrow. Yeah, yep. So in, in light of that hope that we have of, of how everything that God gives us points us to the hope that we have in, uh, in Christ and into the heaven and uh, the glory that awaits us. Uh, how should heaven um, serve as a motivation for us and uh, how we live our lives now? Well, especially for believers, right? If our chief end and our purpose of life is to glorify God and enjoy him forever, well, that purpose is only truly attained by Jesus coming back, redeeming the earth, bringing his presence, God's presence here and having heaven on earth, right? Without that, then, then what's really our purpose? And I made the point in the sermon, like, uh, why would we come to church and worship God if there's no hope of us getting to be with him? 
to enjoy his presence, uh, to, to see his work continue uh, for an in, infinite amount of time. And so, I, you know, when we're just working here on earth, it, it's easy to get stuck in the now and the present. And, and that's, that's, that's good, right? I mean, we're supposed to pray for our daily bread. But our daily bread, again, comes from uh, an infinite good God who we long to see and experience uh, face to face. And so that's the motivation. The motivation of this, this world is hard, right? It is a struggle. And, and what am I struggling for, right? And in 1 Corinthians, when Paul says, we're the most pitied if Jesus isn't returning. And, and that's true, because why are we sacrificing so much if, we're, if there's not going to be an inheritance for us to enjoy in our labor? And so uh, I think it's the only motivation. Um, again, if, if we're not trying to uh, seek out just the greatness of who God is and what he has prepared a place for us and for us to go there with him and to be like he is, if we don't have that motivation, then anything else that we try to motivate, motivate ourselves with is going to be fleeting and shortcoming. And that's ultimately what heaven is about. It's mm-hmm. about being with God and being in his presence yep. and in his people for forevermore. Yep. That's a great promise and, uh, and fuel for how we live our lives today. So, John, uh, thank you so much for, uh, for your hard work, uh, diligent work on preparing this message and uh, for turning us uh, towards uh, Jesus and the hope that we have.